Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video. And today, Hasbro had their Fan Fest Friday, May the 21st, 2021. And during their live stream, they had a small selection of Transformers reveals that are sure to excite a lot of people, even though some of them have already leaked. And on top of that, I was in Florida over this past weekend, and there are some cool stuff down there that I do want to talk about. So without further ado, let's sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's transform and roll out. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member, or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. Okay, so the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that I was in Universal Studios Orlando uh, over this past weekend. I spent a couple of days there with my family, um, and while I was there, uh, first of all, they released the mask mandate, so you didn't have to wear your mask while you were outdoors. It made it a lot easier to get around the Florida heat but the ride itself is pretty cool. Basically, you are riding a uh, special made character named Evac for the ride. The gift shop doesn't necessarily have the toy in stock any longer. I don't think that they manufacture it, but the ride itself is pretty cool regardless. If you're a fan of Transformers in general, it is a cool ride. Peter Cullen does the voice of Optimus Prime during the whole uh, bit of it. And Frank Welker is actually the one who's doing the voice of Megatron. Another good thing, uh, even though, uh, you know, Hugo Weaving was the one who did it in the first three movies, it is based upon, I think, the first two movies, you know, so it takes place, I guess, like after Revenge of the Fallen and, you know, so Devastator is like attacking the city and you end up getting sucked in and it's kind of cool to see all that stuff. If you're familiar with the Spider-Man ride down there, uh, it's very much the same thing. So it is something to worth check out, but the gift shop is where it's at because the gift shop has a whole bunch of Transformers toys, t-shirts, hats. It had these really cool statues. I think the statues themselves, I think it's Prime One Studios, but if you wanted to get your hands on one of them, they do have them in the cases for sale. And they also had, as you can see, a bunch of War for Cybertron toys. And having the War for Cybertron toys, uh, you know, they ha have everything from Siege, Earthrise, and Kingdom. Lots of grapples, lots of Astro Trains. So if you don't already have Astro Train, and if you don't have Grapple, please, Grapple's a good toy, honestly. Pick him up. If you haven't already, either either at the Universal Store or you can get him like everywhere is trying to get him, you know, trying to get uh, them, them sold out. But Grapple's a good toy. He really is. Like, I don't know why he's such a shelf former. I even did a retrospective on the character, so he is worth checking out. But while I was down there, I did pick up Huffer. I will say, Huffer is a fantastic toy. I've I've been playing with him all morning uh, during the entire uh, Hasbro fan f uh, fest. And as I've been checking him out, I think he's a really good toy as well. On top of that, when I came back, uh, I met up with... One of my subscribers, his name is Monarch Prime, or at least that's what he goes by. And uh, when I met up with him, he was able to find for me Studio Series 86 Cup and Blur, which is in the uh, gift shop as well at Universal, which was also cool. Uh, but I waited to meet up with him since he uh, had them on hold for me. And uh, because my local stores, as you know, don't really stock much. I also, while I was there at the store, I ended up picking up, uh, you know, at, at my local store, I did end up finding Kingdom Ultra Magnus and Beast Megatron. But I got an even bigger surprise. If you guys saw, uh, I released these videos while I was down in Florida, was my Constructicons review. But someone thought, you know, you know something, if you got if you got Devastator, you really can't not have Devastator face off against one of his rivals. So Melvor of the Game Chasers sent me Kingdom or Siege Ultra uh, Omega Supreme. And I, I gotta say thank you to both of them for being so kind. And really, honestly, all of any one of you, you you don't have to do the charity that you do, you know, sending me stuff. But if you do, I just know that I do appreciate it. And I appreciate every single one of you uh, for helping support the channel in any way that you do. But without further ado, let's get into the FanFest Friday news. Okay, so while Hasbro FanFest was 
kind of small. Uh, they did have quite a few reveals circling around the fact that it is the 35th anniversary for Transformers the movie. That's right, the very first time the Transformers graced the silver screen was not in 2007, but was in 1986, August 8th of 1986 in particular. And they had already released the movie on Blu-ray a couple of years ago. In fact, I did a review on that release of the Blu-ray, but they are now, that went out of print and they're bringing it back and they're going to re-release it for the 35th anniversary. And I gotta say, I'm pretty excited. When you take a look at this art in particular, you say to yourself like, man, I really wish that this was the art that they used on the packaging because that was the original poster that they, you know, used to sell the movie. But instead, like this is just more of a uh, widescreen 35th anniversary mural. Has all the characters on it and it looks fantastic. But they got an artist by the name of Matt Ferguson and they had interviewed him uh, during the fa uh, fan fest. And he didn't, he has done the artwork specifically for both the Steelbook and the 4K release of the movie. Taking a look at the actual casing for the Steelbook, you're gonna have a very minimalist design. It's gonna have Rodimus Prime opening the Matrix, saying Transformers the movie. And when you open it up, you're gonna see Galvatron on the back with the original ta uh, tagline of Beyond Good, Beyond Evil, Beyond Your Wildest Imagination. And, and I think that is a suitable use for the cover because, I mean, I think a Steelbook you know, doesn't necessarily have to be busy. I myself don't really collect steel books uh, myself. Preferably, I would rather just, I do want physical media, but I want, uh, you know, some really good art uh, overall. And I will say the, the 4K artwork looks fantastic. They have, you know, Rodimus Prime there on the cover. You have the Dinobots battling against Devastator. You have the Autobots running. You have Unicron in the back. It's a really cool looking uh, piece of art for the, the release of it. And it's going to be released in 4K and Blu-ray as well. So I don't have a 4K TV, nor do I have a, um, you know, a 4K a player. So it's not like I can, I can utilize it. But I do like this artwork overall. I do hope that it does have the digital copy. So if those of you who don't have the, you know, have access to the digital copy, and I'm really curious if it's going to have both the uh, HD, you know, it's gonna have the widescreen version of the film and the full screen version of the film. Because if you don't know, the movie was actually constructed in full screen. So that uh, aspect ratio, I think, I think it's like 1.33 over one and they had cut the tops and the bottoms off in the animated movie in order to make it 16 by nine for widescreen audiences in movie theaters back in 1986. They didn't do that necessarily with normal films, but they did do it with animated films back in the day. And so that's exactly what you get out of this. So I do want the full screen Blu-ray of the film but I'm curious as to what is gonna come in the packaging. I'm hoping it comes with a little bit of extras as well. Getting a closer look at the actual image itself, you can see Optimus Prime versus Megatron on the back. You have the Dinobots facing off against Devastator, of course. I already talked about the front of it, but that back cover does look really cool because that is an iconic scene. And uh, having that uh, over, you know, for use of the cover art is is done really well so i definitely want to get my hands on it now to continue the celebration of the 35th anniversary of transformers the movie there are they are continuing the studio series 86 toy line and ben from marketing and evan from product design they made some snarky remarks about how some of these toys were revealed uh, ahead of time and they ended up on some people's review tables early which did not make them happy and they, of course, expressed their uh, displeasure about that. I myself, uh, you know, wanted to wait until I saw official images before I even I talked about it. And I will say, taking a look at the first reveal is Slag. And of course, they're have, they have to call him Slug. If you're not familiar with why they have to call him Slug, it's because Slag, which by definition means a, a piece of molten metal, to go along with his function of being a flamethrower in the UK means promiscuous woman. So they can't use that slang for 
a slag, you know, for a, a Dinobot on a kid's toy, so they have to name him Slug, which is really not a suitable name for the character, but it, I guess, one letter. It's kind of the same thing as Scrapnel versus Shrapnel, kind of the same thing. And he comes with Daniel, but he looks great. I, I have, I really, really want this toy. I still have to get my hands on uh, Studio Series 86 Grimlock. I have not found him yet, but I will soon. And uh, when I do, it, you know, it's the same kind of thing with Daniel being a non-transforming uh, little minifigure that comes with them as an accessory. Looks great in robot mode, both cool in their poses. And you can even put, you know, Daniel on Slag's shoulder. I'm going to continue to call him Slag, even though they're releasing him as Slug. And for the same reason, I'm not going to say that you're transform, you know, you're converting it, you're transforming it. At least I, I'm not going to change that lingo just because they have to. But the backdrop in and of itself is the Quintesson pit and his dino mode does look really, really great in particular. Uh, I'm glad that they are able to capture the animation model so well with Slag. They use uh, his tail as a storage for his blaster, which I do, do think is a good place for it. And it looks great to, to have that whole scene where he comes in and says, excuse me. Now, for those of you who are unaware about this, uh, Slag in particular, uh, his animation model it uses has uh, white legs and a red robot head. The reason why they went with that and not with the cart, you know, not with the toy accurate where it's red horns in dino mode and a black he head and black legs is because that's actually the release that Hasbro did back in 1985 when, uh, you know, in Canada. So this is pretty much Canadian colored slag, you know, so that was the, what they used for the animation model. Same thing is there was early rendition where they were supposed to, you know, change the color for swoop and they ended up using the blue for the uh, diaclone color for the toy instead of using it in red. And I do hope that they release a Studio Series 86 swoop in blue. And then if people still want a red version of Swoop, they can maybe they might do a, a you know a Generation Selects release of that in as well. But the red one didn't sell very well for the Power of the Prime Swoop. So that being said, I don't know if they're going to end up releasing Swoop in red. They'll probably release Swoop in blue. But I do want all five Dinobots, and I think he looks fantastic. Going along with that same battle scene in the 1986 movie was the Sharktacon Gnaw. And this one is souped up. He's much larger than the original swoop was. Looks great in both modes. The shark mode looks great. The only thing that I have a complaint about with Gnaw is pretty much a complaint with him altogether. And that is the fact that as you're looking at his shark mode, you can see it right there is that his mouth, uh, that his head is like basically tucked in as his tongue. And it kind of looks weird. Uh, I have the Cyberverse Sharktacons. Uh, I ended up buying three of them so I can army build it. For the same reason, I'm probably going to buy a few. I do want to get a few of these Sharktacons as well. They're army builders. So you buy like multiples of them and you can have the Dinobots and you can have Hot Rod and Cup facing off against the Sharktacons. And on top of that, you know, the, the, the biggest problem they have is that the, the head goes in like where the tongue is for the shark and that's the same problem with the cyberverse one i think the g1 toy had the same problem and i think the titans return actually i think the head on that one the titans return one tucked in a little bit better but i could be wrong but this is a much bigger and better looking shark Decon. you know his robot mode looks great you know he comes with a weapon he comes with a blaster as well as his his mace which you can use that i think it's a i think it would be considered a flail right a flail is it's pretty much like is like a ball and chain and and the mace would be like stationary uh it i guess you it is i would consider it a, a flail but you know remember when cup smashed a few <laughs> shark decons with one of the uh shark decons flail flail tail weapons and evan was able to show off both the studio series 86 alongside the Titans Return Sharktacon, and you can see how much detail is given off of both. And it, it really does sell the toy a lot better because not only is it bigger, but it's got a more accurate color scheme compared, comparatively speaking, and uh, I think it looks great. And the third reveal for the Studio Series 86 was 
Rekar. This one had been leaked uh, while I was still in Florida and uh, people were showing images of it. It was just the robot mode that they were showing. And I was like, I'll wait till I get to see more clear images of him. I want to make sure that he's got his mustache, that his robot mode looks good. And it does. It really does. Rekar looks fantastic. They have junk, you know, Junkion or the Planet of Junk uh, in the background, which is great. And he comes with his pinwheel axe which he can use to face off against Springer. Uh, the Junkions themselves are a, they're basically kind of like neutral to start off with. They're kind of like, they face off against the Autobots, but they end up befriending them in the end, thanks to Ba, Weep, Grana, Weep, Ninibong. And uh, the, the Junkions themselves, is like they're led by Rekgar, and Rekgar himself was, uh, was awesome. They all talk TV. And which does make it worth it as a character. And he does transform into his awesome motorcycle mode. Now I have the power of the Prime's Rekgar and I didn't really care for that toy, but it does work as one of the Junkions. But you're gonna wanna buy two of the Studio Series Rekgar for one reason and one reason only, is that Rekgar himself rode another junkie on in motorcycle mode to attack the Autobots with. Basically, when they were attacking, they were all on motorcycles, kind of like Mad Max. I'm wondering if somebody ended up seeing Road Warrior and so said, yeah, we got to do that in the movie. And uh, so the, the junkie ons come in on motorcycles and, <laughs> you know, if you knock one down, uh, the one that's that was in robot mode transforms into motorcycle. The other one transforms into a robot and jumps on. And they keep going, you know, so they don't stop. And that was one of the cool things about the Junkions. And and Evan even showed Rekgar riding on top of it, so you can basically reenact that whole scene going on where you check in but you don't check out. Like I loved some of the the, the lines in that movie uh, overall. And they also showed the power of the Primes, Rekgar riding on top as well, which I guess is okay. To me, I'd rather have two of Rekgar like riding on motorcycle and have the other junkie on just be another character to be able to be utilized. So really up to you on what you wanna do. And the final reveal for Hasbro's Fan Fest today was Shattered Glass Starscream. And basically what they're doing is they're taking the Siege Mold and giving him in jet fire colors. The idea behind Shattered Glass, if you're not familiar, is that it's the heroic Decepticons versus the evil Autobots. It's a whole mirror universe. And so we've already seen the Shattered Glass Optimus and Ratchet two pack. We've seen Blur, we've seen Megatron, and now we're seeing Starscream. So we're gonna get a few more Shattered Glass uh, figures in addition to a comic book that's gonna tell the story of this version of Shattered Glass. And I gotta say, I do like this color scheme. I'm not a big fan of Shattered Glass myself, but he comes with a really cool sword that does split in two, very much kind of like, um, like the power sword in Masters of the Universe. And it can be double wielded, so he can come in like a ninja if he wants to, has the same blasters as the original Siege Mold does as well. Looks great with those blasters. And, you know, getting a lot of looks of his robot mode looks phenomenal. And his jet mode in, it does store those swords on the sides of the blasters as well. So it does allow you to have it in both modes and still have all of his weapons. And I got to say the red pops, the white pops. But I again, I'm not a big shattered glass person, but I think this is really, really cool for a lot of people who have been wanting this white knight star screen. The thing is about the Shattered Glass toys is that they are all exclusive to Hasbro Pulse. They kind of joked about how like, oh, everything's an exclusive, everything's an exclusive. They, they were literally poking fun at a lot of people. I thought it was disingenuous to do so that, uh, you know, that they're coming out and literally like, if everybody is complaining about the exclusives, they're gonna make fun of it. I didn't think that was a really cool thing to do, but, uh, I do know that the Shattered Glass toys do come with an exclusive comic book, so you can get, if you collect them all, you'll get the entire story of Shattered Glass, uh, which is good for fans in and of itself. And I'm wondering if the Shattered Glass comic books, the, like the, the the comic books themselves, not the toys, are gonna be released as well, but I, I do know that you're getting an exclusive cover with each of the toys as they're being 
Beast. So if you do want to get your hands on the Shadow Glass figures, you do have to go through Hasbro Pulse. And I'm going to have the, the uh, links in the description for all of the toys I talk about today. Overall, I think that Hasbro's Fan Fest today was not as exciting to a lot of fans. Uh, I do think that it was great for people who wanted to see Naw, wanted to see Rekar, wanted to see uh, you know, the studio, more Studio Series 86. I wish there was more stuff for Kingdom, and I know a lot of people are waiting on other stuff as well for other, other favorite Transformers toy lines, but I was very excited to see the Studio Series stuff. Shattered Glass is not really something that I collect uh, in particular, but I do think that a lot of fans are excited about it. But I want to know what you guys think. Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe and check out my other videos as well. I have more retrospectives, discussions, news and everything coming down the pipeline. So stay tuned for all of that. And as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.